Praise the Lord. Who is glad to be in service this morning? Welcome to New Life Pentecostal Church where you can be rescued, redeemed, and restored. At this moment, I'm going to bring up our pastor and he is going to go over the announcements. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. God is good this morning. Amen. It is good to be in church today. I'm glad to see each and every one of you. If you look around, we still have uh, several that are sick this morning. And I'm going to call some of them out in prayer today. Uh, Brother Johnny texts me, Sister Kay is still very sick. She definitely needs prayer. Also, Sister Sharon Harvey is sick and, and needs a lot of prayer this morning. Um, trying to go across, uh, who has met Sister Suzanne is sick. Her and Jerry are sick. Sister, you need prayer this morning. Donna, Donna, Donna Smith is sick and under the weather this morning. Uh, Brother Jess and Sister Joyce had been under the weather. They're doing better now. Thank God for that. But there are a lot that are sick today, a lot that are under the weather, but I'm glad that you're here. So if we could, well, we're going to pray in just a moment, but I'm going to go through our announcements. And I don't know if Sister Michelle said it, but as always, we welcome you to New Life Pentecostal Church, where we believe you can be rescued, redeemed, and restored. Amen. I believe that with all of my heart. As always, you can scan the QR code for announcements to see what's happening, what's going on. Also, prayer meeting every Tuesday night at 730. And I promise you, prayer meeting is important. We don't pray for five minutes or six minutes. We pray for at least for 30 to 40 minutes every Tuesday night. Amen. And it's important. And prayer is what changes things. Also, uh, there is a Bible study at 6 p.m. on Tuesday nights in the temporary youth room, which is where uh, we have a small group Bible study. You're welcome to go. You're welcome to be a part of that. Uh, we have a great class. We had a great crowd last week, and hopefully very soon, uh, everybody will be well and back in at 100%. Also, our addiction recovery class, every Thursday night we had a guest speaker. Uh, I believe his name was Andrew Conway, if I said that correct. He was here Thursday night. Amen. I'm excited about that group. We had about 30 in the class on Thursday night. Also, if, you're, if you would like to do uh, a, a online giving, listen, we, we love taking up offering the old-fashioned way. And I believe that works, and I believe it's fine. But some people do a lot of online banking, and it's, it's hard for them to get a cash or check uh, together. So if you'd like to download Givelify on your phone, you can then look the church up, connect it, and then it's easy to do. As always, we're looking for volunteers uh, to help with the van, help pre-service, help post-service. We can always use your help. Also, daily Bible reading schedule. Uh, this has been such a help for me not to get behind, not to forget a day. Uh, this is what's coming up this week, correct? This is this week. So this is going to be on social media. If you do not like and follow the church social media page, Shame on you. Please do that today. We're, we're less than 100 follows away from having 1,000 followers anyway. But this week we're going Exodus 19 through the 33rd chapter, Matthew 18 through the 22nd chapter. That's this week. It's important that you read the Word of God and it will help disciple you. Also, today ends 21 days of prayer and fasting. I thank you for fasting. I thank you for being in prayer Amen. It changes things and it does move things. It moves people. Amen. Also, February the 2nd, that is this coming Friday night, we have a children's Holy Ghost revival here at the church. Brother Jeremy Watson is going to be speaking. It is a section four, sex, so it's section wide, like area wide. It's going to be a lot of other churches here. Um, even some outside of our section are going to be here. Please come out and support. It is a children's revival. You will enjoy it. I promise you. Come and support our children. Also, chocolate covered strawberries for sale uh, for $15 a box. I'm not asking you, please buy, but I'm not asking you necessarily to buy them all. Go out and sell them at the black uh, tablecloth covered table. There are some order forms there. Sister Sharon Bean, where are you at? Over 30? 40 dozen she has sold. Let's give her a hand. Amen. That's amazing. Somebody try to catch her. Somebody try to catch her. Also, Alabama Youth Convention the tw uh, of this year is February 16th and 17th at the Hyatt Regency Center. Um, that's at the Galleria, correct? Yeah, that's the one. 
we've got a group, at least seven kids that are going, and at least six of them are for sure staying overnight. It's going to a good group of boys and girls. It's going to be a great time. Also, next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month. We will be having service next Sunday evening. I want to encourage you to come out and be a part of that. All right, if we could, let's stand together tonight, this morning, not tonight. You can stand right now. Amen. It's so good to see uh, Sister Patricia back in the house of the Lord. Been missing you. Been under the weather. Also good to see Brittany Mora. Amen. Been missing her. Somebody make her feel uncomfortable right now and give her a hand clap. <laughs> she knows we love her. I, look at me. I knocked somebody's water bottle top off. Uh, I picked at her before service. She knows we love her. Good if you're a guest here this morning. Good to have you. And before we start, I need, uh huh, I need to pick pick my fight with Sister Destiny this morning. I love you, Sister. De Is that your guest? Oh, he counts. I invite. Oh no, Brian knows I've invited him to church. Amen. Good. It is so good to have Brian Payton, his wife Holly, here this morning. Let's welcome them. I, it's amazing the things you remember and the things you forget, right? I don't know, uh, you know, sometimes if where my keys are, but I remember my first birthday party was at Brian's house. Uh, you know, I, I probably don't remember the party, but I always remember being told that it was there. Uh, but that, that was it. You, he, he's a little older than me. But I grew up uh, across the road, staying at my grandmother's house from where he lived. His folks were good folks. His mother was such a sweet sweet lady Doris and his dad was one of the most aggravating poking fun people you could ever have known he would torment me he it's a wonder today I'm not confused because he told me constantly that I was a little girl <laughs> amen but it's so good to have Brian and his wife Holly here this morning <laughs> let's worship the Lord we're going to go to the Lord in prayer though before we begin service Lord we love you today and we thank you Jesus for your many blessings the opportunity to be in the house of the Lord today we don't take lightly we don't take for granted but we're here today God and we are thankful for just another day I'm so thankful God to be in your presence Lord speak to us God move in this service and touch somebody's life in the precious name of Jesus let's worship today together me 
Kevin, if you'd ask the Lord's blessing today. Amen. I have found his graces all come me. He supplied my every need. Oh, while I sit and learn at Jesus' feet. I am free, yes, free indeed. Well, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory and full of love. Well, it is Paul, I am free, I am free from sin and full of glory. And I have passed every yet been told. When I have found the pleasure I want great, it is joy and peace with Blessing I am saved from the awful gulf of sin. Well, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. Well, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. All the hell has never yet been told. I have found that hope so bright and clear. to Sister Michelle and we're going to sing the last song together in worship.
Lord, a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can you lift your hands and just thank you, Jesus? Thank him. Give him 30 minutes of praise and just thank him for all the blessing, all the good. Hallelujah. We can never outpraise the Lord. We can never thank him enough. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, God. We magnify you, Jesus. Come on, let's continue to sing and worship the Lord to that song. If you're in the church house this morning, let's lift our hands to the Lord and worship. Come on, don't look around. Don't worry about what's next. Just worship the Lord. Here I am. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Here I am to Brother Ty, if you could put a little more of the blue mic in the blue pack this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, I, it, several of you know, and because I, I asked you to pray in the pre-service moments today, really since about 8.30, usually when I come to church, I've got an idea of what I'm going to preach. It may not be written out. It may not be flush, but I know what I'm going to preach somewhat. At least like a sentence or something. But I came this morning with nothing. And I actually thought, Brother Ty said, so what are you preaching? I said, I have nothing. And then I thought, wait a minute, David had a sermon called, I have nothing. And he did good. I thought, what if I just preached, I have nothing? I'd probably mess it up. I'd preach it too long, wouldn't I? <laughs> Amen. And so... Listen, I've been to a conference this weekend. I have a lot of things to preach. I want to preach what God wants me to preach. I heard a message Friday night, and Brother Crowder said, if you don't preach that, I'm going to preach it. And, but I like things to kind of marinate a little longer with me, you know, to make sure I fully flush it out. And I'm going to be honest, I'm pulling from a lot of different places this morning. I, Brother Daryl had sent me a, a message he heard on YouTube. The other, well, it's been a couple weeks ago. And I didn't even get around to listening to it until Thursday. And I thought I'd never heard that in the Bible. It's wonderful. And then, and then I ran across something else today. So I had all these things I was, I was pulling from. I really wanted to preach what Brother Daryl sent me in Leviticus. Leviticus 7, 7, and 8. And the sin offering is, so is the trespass offering. There is one law for them, the priest that maketh atonement therewith shall have it. And the priest that offereth any man's burnt offering, even the priest shall make, have himself the skin of the burnt offering which it offered. I really wanted to preach this morning to the priest go the skins. I wanted to preach that. Because just because you bring something to the house of God and you have it in your walk with God, if it's not right, God's not going to accept it. But many times we don't care if God accepts it. We want the pastor to accept it. To soothe our conscience. And whether or not, Brother Jonathan, God accepted the sacrifice, the priest had already accepted it. You know, that sinless, that lamb was supposed to be without spot and blemish. And his payment for that sacrifice was he got to keep the skin for leather. For a covering, for his tent, for his clothing, for his family. He got to keep that. He got to have that. So bad I wanted, because that would have been a good one to preach this morning. Just because God don't buy it, if I accept it, I've bought it. I wanted to preach that, because that spot that was on that lamb will always be on that lamb. Will always be on. See, every time you've ever seen one of those artist renditions of the animal on the sacrifice, what it's always whole, isn't it? A whole little lamb tied up. That's not Bible. It was skinned alive. The blood was drained. It was put about the altar. It was separated. 
The intestines were washed. It was burned. Everything was burned for that offering except the skin. The priest had to keep it because whatever he accepted was on him. I wanted to preach that this morning, and I felt like I could, man, I could skin the flock this morning. I'm, there's always sin we can preach about this morning. There's always sin we can preach about. But I really felt like that's not what God wants me to preach this morning. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 22, the first verse and the fifth verse. And I think God is sending me here with more compassion today and a little more mercy. And honestly, I want you to know that I've had this message like a few minutes. So pardon me if it's not flushed out. We're going to read verses 1 through 5. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And everyone that was in, listen, this is the part I want you to hear. Everyone that was in distress, everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented. Now, if you're here this morning, David aligned himself with the distressed people, the debted people, and the people that were discontented. Think about that a minute. And he became a captain over them. I feel the Holy Ghost now. I know I'm in the Lord. And they were with him about 400 men. And David went thence to Mizpah of Moab, and he said unto the king of Moab, Let my father and mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you till I know what God will do for me. You don't know what God's going to do for you because you know you're still running with the discontented, the debtors, and the distressed. Amen? Well, Saul was hunting him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, no matter who's after you. There's some people you don't need to align. No matter who's against you, it's who's before us. And he went to the king of Moab and said, take care of my folks. And the prophet Gad said unto David, the prophet Gad said to David, because David is hiding out in the cave of Dulam with the distressed, the debtors, and the discontented. The prophet, the man of God, said, abide not in the hold. Depart, depart, and get thee into the land of Judah. Let me tell you what, you can be seated this morning. Let me tell you what distressed people do not do. Come on, I, I'm not going, I know that noise distracted you just a minute. Do you know what distressed people do not do? Do you know what debtors don't do? Do you know what discontent people don't do? They don't pray. They don't praise. They don't praise. I'm going I'm to keep preaching it until I can find out if you're discontent, a debtor, or, or you're a distressed. But those people don't praise. They don't have joy. They don't have a right spirit about them. They don't have love. And if David was ever going to be anything for God, he had to get away from those kind of people. Say it. If David was ever going to be anything, well, well, the Bible says he was a captain over him. I'm sorry. God called me to be more than a captain. You don't hear me this morning. God called me to be more than a captain. If you're satisfied with being head over a bunch of people in your little schism that don't love anybody, that they don't hate anything, and they got no joy, they're broke. I'm sorry, I'm not a prosperity gospel preacher, but I believe my God is blessing me. I believe whithersoever the sole of my feet touches, God's given me for an inheritance because I'm a part of the same promise of Scripture. I am blessed going in, and I'm blessed going out. Amen. And if you've made up in your mind you're always going to be broke and, and, and in debt, Shame on you because you ain't got the same God in your life I do. I'm not a prosperity gospel preacher. I'm a word preacher. And the Bible tells me, give and it shall be given unto you. Amen. The Bible tells me that I don't want to be like those people locked up in a dark cave, locked up in distress. I've been in a cave. I've been in the largest cave system in the world in Mammoth Cave. I've also been in the, in the lowest point in Texas. 
in a cave there too. Let me tell you, it's, it's not the conditions you want to dwell in. Well, you don't understand where I come from. Well, how many of you have had to say that before? Well, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know where my family's come from. You don't understand why I'm so discontent. I understand that you ain't got a right spirit about you. But see, what's unique about our family is I can tell you about living in a cave. But I got to go back several, several, several hundred years. How many of you know that the Bean clan, that there was a clan of them, there was a bunch of them in Scotland? Did y'all know that? Y'all know that? Yeah, we were the Beans in Scotland. You know that Loch Ness monster? The Beans actually come from around Loch Ness. Okay? Here's what's unique, and there's a lot of different clans. You know, there, there were clans. Like, you, you may have had the same last name, but you might have been of, like, that clan over there. But you, you were all kind of related, but you may not. You see, there was a clan of beans, and they, there was a, a leader of them called Sawney Bean. And he had a clan of about 50. And they lived in a cave. Y'all know that? Lived in a cave. They lived in a cave down by the, by the ocean side, and the only time you could even get in was at low tide. Now, I'm telling you some family history now. Family history. Low tide, so it was secret. And this bunch of beans was highwaymen. Y'all know what highwaymen do? They rob. They murder. And here's the next thing about them. This is going to sound really gross. The bean clan that lived in this cave that were highwaymen, were murderers and robbers, they were cannibals too. Man, they, was, they were some bad folks. They were some real bad folks. You can, listen, you can go to Wikipedia. You can, you can find this. It's not hidden. They even made a movie after our family called The Hills Have Eyes. Any of you that ain't got the Holy Ghost, you've watched that. Amen? Until one day, they mugged some people and somebody got away and told the king. And the king sent the army and the army had them all killed. He's like, well, how did you get here? Because I come from a little different clan, all that bunch. But what I'm telling you is, don't tell me that your past and where you come from and who your mama was and who your daddy was and how you was raised has to determine who you are tomorrow. If you want to stay in the cave, you're going to keep staying in dark conditions. You're going to keep staying in damp moist, moldy, nasty, filthy conditions. But the word of God came from the man of God saying, abide not, come on somebody stand to your feet, in the hole. You need to get into the land of Judah. You need to get to the land of Judah. You need to get to praise. The Bible says that his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I want to praise about me. I don't want to sit there discontent. If you're discontent, I can't help you. Go to another church where they can put something in you that you'll like. But my God has given me a word today for somebody that says abide, not in the hole. Get to praise. Get to Judah. But you see, you're content right now where you're at because you feel like you got some control and you're kind of important. You don't know I'm important, but you're miserable. You're miserable. You're the captain of your little carnival. Amen? You're the big fish in your little goldfish bowl. But you're depressed because you're alone. You're alone because nobody wants to be around the bad spirit. you got to get out of the hole. you got to get out of that place of persecution, that place of distress, that place of discontentment. Well, you don't understand. I'm, I'm upset. I get you're upset. I get you're upset. I'm upset sometimes. i got to get over it because ain't nothing going to rob my joy. Nothing's going to stop my praise. Nothing's going to hinder my walk with God. You see, listen here. David, the Bible says, was a captain over them. Captain. He was like in charge. What was he in charge of? People that were broke? He, and I know you can say, well, they seen him as the monarch, the ruler. Let's be honest, there was a bunch of outlaws. Yeah, they were a bunch of outlaws right now. They were distressed. They were broke. They were discontent. They had a bad attitude, some of them. 
And if you don't think they didn't have a bad attitude, every time, I'm let me meddle in the Holy Ghost, every time that they got a leg up on Saul to where they, some of his debtors, his discontented folks, and his distressed people, every time they got an opportunity to get near Saul, one of those bunch of mighty men wanted to kill the king. And it was David that had to say, hey, buddy, don't touch the Lord's anointed. Do his prophets no harm. Yeah. You got to be careful who you run with. And the problem, David was running with 400 of them, and he was all locked up in one cave with them. He didn't have nowhere to go. He was all up in. Sometimes you got to realize that the bunch you're running with can drag you down. I love the recovery program. I love the and I, it's helping us reach people. But I want you to understand, you cannot always be in recovery. At one point, you've got to be able to stand square on your feet and say, I am recovered. I am delivered. I have been set free. I have been brought out. The Bible says he brought me out of darkness to show forth the praises of him. That's why I'm here today, not because I am what I used to be, but I am on my way to being what he's called me to be. You see, David at that time was a captain of a bunch of losers. But Jesus never called us to be a captain of a bunch of losers. Revelations 1 and 6 says, And hath made us kings and priests unto God. I've not been called to a captainship, but I've been called to a priesthood and a kingship. I've been called to stand before the throne of God with proud boldness in the Holy Ghost. Not afraid of my calling. Not afraid that I stand for Jesus. Not afraid to say that I am with the Lord. Hear me, somebody. Stand to your feet. Some of you need a good old-fashioned touch of the Holy Ghost. Some of you need a good old-fashioned touch of joy in your life. And I'm talking about the one that comes with no strings attached. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to put on a little show so I'll feel better about myself. No, you need to come and you need to lay aside every weight, everything that you know God's not happy with, everything you know that you've been holding on to, every bit of jealousy, every bit of greed, every bit of pride and immorality. Lay it down. Lay it down. Let it go. Let it cast aside every way to sin that does so easily beset us. Come on, somebody. He's not called you to be a captain over a bunch of losers, but he's called you to be kings and priests with him. Hallelujah. And so, sister, you got a song? Start singing it. We're going to have a little altar call. We're going to have a good old shouting match. Amen. I, I'm here to serve God. I've got a God in my life. Jesus Christ is his name. He didn't save me to leave me in the gutter. He didn't save me to leave me in the pit. He didn't save me to be destroyed. But I am victorious. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Do you got to shout in your spirit? Do you got to praise in your vow? Hallelujah. If you want the Holy Ghost this morning, you need to come to an altar. If you need deliverance, come to an altar. If you need joy, come to an altar. Jesus Christ is Lord forever. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. Jesus Christ is Lord forever. Come on, somebody. Are you on the I Holy Ghost? Stop. Do you want the Spirit of the Lord? I just Do you want the blessing? Praise in His name. Abide I not in the hope. Stop. Get into praise Judah. In Get into praise. praise. Get into Judah and praise. Hallelujah. I can't stop. Hallelujah. Praise in His name. Come on, get into praise. Get into praise. praise get a shout name. about you. Get some joy. Stop. Get praise some joy. Name. Hallelujah. Jesus. Come on, get joy. Get praise. Lift up your voice and sing for joy. joy. Clap, Clap your hands. hands. Come on, that's it, Charlene. Get joy. Get joy. Get a praise in your life. Get a dance. Get a dance. Hallelujah. Worship is the way that the battle is won. This is the way that we find. We praise Him for the victory. I can't stop. I don't want to stop praising the name of the Lord. I don't want to stop praising. Keep praising. Keep praising. Keep praising. Praise this is Pentecost. Name, I don't know what you came expecting. I came expecting the Holy Ghost to fall. I came expecting the Holy Ghost power to touch 
God is so great. Praising his name, I just can't stop. Praising his name, oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice and sing for joy. Clap your hands, make a joyful noise. Blow the trumpet and shout. Come on, somebody, you need to step out of your seat into an aisle and get into Judah. You need to get into Judah. You need to get into praise. You could pray through the Holy Ghost in a matter of seconds if you just begin to praise the Lord. Give him your praise. Give him your praise. Come on, somebody give him praise this morning. Get into Judah. Praising his name, I just can't stop. Praising his name, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I can't stop. Praising his name, I Why don't you make your way to an altar? Rooms clear out. Just you can come get a fresh touch of the Holy Ghost. Name, get a fresh Jesus. touch from the Lord. Hallelujah. I can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. Oh, hallelujah. I just can't stop hallelujah. praising his name, Jesus. Lift up your voice and sing for joy. Clap your hands, make a joyful noise. Know the trumpet is sound. We praise him for the victory. The weapons we use are not bombs and guns. Worship is the way that the battle is won. This is the way that we find. We praise him for the victory. I can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. I can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop. In the name of Jesus, we pray over this young lady. We pray for her strength. We pray for her body right now. In the name of the Lord. Every knee shall bow. Come on, just get into praise. If you come to the altar, come with your hands raised. Worship and magnify God. Let praise continually be in your mouth. If you want the Holy Ghost, praise the Lord. If you want to pray through the Holy Ghost, just lift your hands and begin to praise the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord forever. I can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name, Jesus. her family, God. I, I pray, Lord, that you strengthen their whole name, family. I just God, minister stop. to them, Lord. Praising Let this young lady be a light in the name of Jesus. Praising his name, Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I won't turn back. I won't turn Lord, back. Jesus. I won't we back turn now. back now.
Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord forever. Every knee, every knee shall bow. Every tongue, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord forever. You know what? Dawson and Joe, you girl, y'all praise his name. Learn how to praise his Learn how to worship. Don't let me make you. on me something the Lord just impressed on me something I preached my whole message to the Davids in here that were called to be kings and priests and God's telling them to get into praise now I'm about to turn and I'm talking to the distressed the discontented and the debtors you hear this morning when David come out of the hole they made up their mind they was coming out with him Amen? You don't have to stay in the hole. Just because other folks decided to pray through, you can pray through too. You don't have to be depressed this morning. You don't have to be discouraged today. You don't have to be in debt. And I'm going to say this. If you've not been supporting the the house of God and, and you've seen things fall apart in your life financially and you're discouraged by it, you don't know where to start, right now just say, Lord, I know what I've done was wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to repent. You can be touched. If you have been depressed, if you have been running from God, if you've been hiding from God in that cave and you're distressed this morning, you can come out of that. You can come out of that. Hear me this morning. You can come out of that. Amen. If you're discontent this morning, you can just say, God, I'm going to have to agree to disagree with you on this. You're going to have to help me through it. But I'm not going to stay discontented my whole life. You're going to help me get over it. Amen. It's up to you this morning. Now, we're going to sing one more time. I'm opening the altars just a moment longer. Is there anybody here today that is distressed, in debt, or discontented? If you are, I want you to come forward. I want you to come forward, come to this front, press your way through, and I want to pray over you today. Is that you, sister? All right, come forward. Anybody else, start singing and worshiping. Got a man right here, Brian, coming forward. Come here with this brother. Brian, come right here. Brian, come over here. 
If there's anybody else, got two coming up right here. That's it. Make some way for them. Come on, begin to sing. Begin to worship in Jesus' name. Somebody with all of their might, clap your hands to the Lord. I said that I would, and I'm now going to recognize those of you in the church that I know read their Bible through this year, and I know you did because you told me you did. And if I missed your name, I apologize. And if I missed your name, let me know today, and we'll do it next Sunday. Um, I'm going to call out Sister Harvey. Sister Harvey's uh, sick this morning, but if she will be watching. Let's give Sister Harvey a hand clap of congratulations. Sister Marcia Etris. She's not here this morning, but let's recognize her. Brother Steve Bliss read his Bible through this year. Praise the Lord. So good to have the Blisses with us. Praise the Lord. Sister Suka Bliss read her Bible through this year. Amen. So proud. and I know it's, it's not easy to read your Bible all the way through in a year. Sister Jennifer Landrum read her Bible through this year. Woohoo. Plus there's <laughs> Sister Jennifer, the coke and a smile goes along with that too. Pastor Josh Bean, but you expected me to have to. Nah. Brother Sam Vining, read it. Where did I, I, there he is. Amen. Whole Bible all the way through in a year. Now, have I missed anybody? Have I missed anybody? Amen. All right, I didn't miss anybody. That's good. So, if you have not read your Bible through last year, you can do it this year. All the way. Now, I'm not saying you didn't read your Bible. But we're trying to read it through the year, and it's discipleship. 
One of the things I learned at the conference this year, and, and why it, you, you'll see a lot of ebb and flow in churches, is because where was the church born? In what room? The upper room. But most people stay in the lower room. They stay in the lower room. They are, they are here because of attraction, and feel good, and fellowship, and things like that. Our goal is to get people in that upper room. One of the ways, one of the staircases that will help get you into the upper room is falling in love with the Word of God. Falling in love with the Word of God. If you're a guest here this morning and we did not get your guest information, Brother Sam, if you'll go ahead and head out to the guest center. If you're a guest and we didn't get your information, make sure you stop there and let Brother Sam help you this morning. Sister Keisha, if she hasn't done so already, she will get you a guest bag. We're so glad to have you uh, again. So good to have our guests. Those of you that are back today that have been sick and under the weather, we're glad to have you back. And there's still a few more families that are sick and under the weather. And we hope to see them back very soon. Uh, but anyway, we serve a good God, don't we? Yes, sister. Sister, I will, and I know Ginger, uh, she'll be listening uh, to give you an update on Sister Ginger and her mother. And this is really a praise report. Her mother, uh, a little over a year ago, had a stroke. Everybody knows. And she has been helping her mother transition down here fully. And it's been a slow process, taking care of her mother, rehabilitating her post-stroke. Um, but Sister Ginger, she watches every service, and she does very much. This is her church. And she has been trying to get everything aligned to be able to get back in church because they've been going to Rainsville, Alabama, which if you know where Rainsville is, that's a, that's a long drive. And they have to go there on the weekends to get their affair. They're selling a house and a car. They, I believe this weekend they were finalizing the sale of her mother's car and the house. Amen. That's the praise report. That's something that they've been working very hard uh, to accomplish. And I know uh, uh, Sister uh, Ginger and her mother, Jalene Thomas, both probably thought this day would never come. Because, you know, when you've got a daunting task in front of your church, it seems like you'll never get there. But with the help of God, we can do it. Amen. And so keep praying for her. Uh, I told her, and Sister Ginger, I know she'll hear this. I told her that I told the whole church that come March the 3rd, we were sending the church van after her one way or the other. Amen. But we do love her. And they're, they're almost here. They've almost got all their affairs in order. But we, we love them and we're praying for them. Church family, if we could send, we're going to dismiss in prayer. How many of you feel like you had church today? Raise your hand. Amen. Amen. Let us go to the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray humbly, God, asking you, Lord, that you would touch those that were here and heard the word of the Lord, God, and let it have changed them. Lord, those that will hear it uh, through, the, through the live stream or through the recorded service, God, let it have impacted them, God, in a way that will change their life. I pray, God, that you're sending healing into the house. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, God bless you today.